Hello and welcome to the fifth part of my LEGO Powered Up tutorial that can also be used for Control Plus and LEGO Boost. Today we will use the color and distance sensor again and this time we want it to react differently to different colors. So it kind of has colored plates or colored code plates that can trigger different behaviors depending on the color of the plate. Some examples where you can use it are an animal that you can feed with different stuff and maybe it likes to eat some stuff, maybe it doesn't like to eat some stuff. You can make emotions or you can let it move or you can build a vending machine that reacts differently on different coins or different chips. Or you can make a train that has color coded plates that control the behavior. And that's an idea that is used in the Lego Duplo train. There you have maybe four types of colored plates and the train reacts to them. And that's what I will do. So I already built a train setup and I put colored plates on the track. There are a few things that you have to keep in mind when placing the colored plates. One thing is that the ground has at least one color. Most of the times it has more colors. In my case, it's yellow and gray. So you have to check that it doesn't detect the color wrong. For that, we have a programming block. That's this one. You can find it in the second or third difficulty. And here you can see which color the sensor currently detects if the hub is connected. I will connect it later. The train has a certain speed and if it drives too fast and the plates are too small, then it won't detect the color correctly. And you have to make sure that in curves that, it, that the sensor is above of the plates and not that it swings uh, around them. So I suggest to use it mostly for straight track pieces. And for this behavior, we will use a different color detection block. Let's say the color trigger. It's this type of a block and you can compare it to the normal start block because it has the same overall shape. It starts a line. And that's basically how this works. This block gets triggered as soon as this color is detected. So let's say that the train drives above a yellow plate, then this block won't be triggered. But as soon as it moves on a red plate, it gets triggered. And then, then the program will be executed until the end. And it can trigger again if it's finished. And if the condition is still true, that means if the sensor still detects red as a color. I hope that you understood that. If you didn't understand that, please write me a comment. Then I will explain that better in a future video. And now we can program different behavior for different colors. So um, we can look at the track again. We have a yellow plate in front of the station. So we want to, the train to stop at a yellow color. Make sure that the port is the right one. In my case, the color sensor is on port B. And um, I told you that it will trigger again when the program reaches the end and the condition is still true. It's not that important for a train because it will have enough speed to leave the plate before it completely stops. Anyways, we want to stop at the station. Then we want to wait for the passengers to enter and leave the train. And then we want to start again. I will drive the motor with a speed of 30, but the motor is the wrong way around in the train. So I have to start it with negative 30 or minus 30 as a speed, because if the number is negative, it will move into the other direction. And we can make a starting sound like this noise. That was the first color plate. Now the train will stop at the station. And we can make a next color plate. We still have the color blue, green and red. Let's say that the whistle blows for a blue color. That's pretty easy to do. 
we can simply change the port, change the color to blue, and put a whistle blow block behind that. I will use the fourth sound for that. I'm a bit lazy, so I will do the same for red, just with a different sound. And this time I want to use the third sound. And for the green plate, I want the train to stop, to change the color of the hub LED and to start again. It's basically what we do here, just without a sound and with different colors for the hub LED. So we can use another trigger block for another color that will get triggered when the train drives above a plate with this color. Then the train should stop. It should change the color of the hub LED. We can use this block for that. Here we can select the hub, which is this symbol, and we can select a color. I want it to turn green. Then I want it to wait for half a second. Then the LED should turn red again. And then it should start again with a speed of minus 30. Make sure that it's not too fast, because then it might not recognize the colors correctly. And that's basically the program. There's still one thing missing, and that's the starting behavior, like the first thing to do. With the current program, it will wait until the color sensor detects one of the colors, but if it doesn't stand on a color, then none of these blocks will be triggered. So we have to make some kind of default behavior at the beginning that starts the motor. And for that we can use the normal starting point that gets executed on the start of the program. And there we can start the motor. And we can make the hub LED red. I will make it red because it's at the back of the train and the back of the train can shine in a red light. But anyways, now we can start the program and test it. Keep in mind that the view of the program has a slight delay, so you might not hear the programs at the right time, but the program works as we wanted. And that's how you can program a train that reacts to different colors. You simply need a starting point for every color that it can detect, and then you can program different behaviors after that. This can also be used for a line follower. And if you remember, last time I gave you the idea to program a line follower. I will describe the solution for that in the next part. But until then, I want to give you a few more tips. If you already found out how to make a line follower, or if you want to try it on your own, then you can simply skip this part. For everyone else, these different starting points can also be used as an alternative to this waiting block for a line follower. And basically, you have to think about what you can detect with the sensor or what the car can detect and how it should react to that. It can only detect stuff with the color sensor, so you only have two possible options. The color is either the, the color of the line or the other color. And then you can think about how it should react, what should it do when it's on the line, and what should it do if it drove a bit too far and is near the line to go back to the line. With these tips I will end this tutorial for today. 
please give me feedback in the comments if there's something that you didn't understand or if I should explain something or if you want to see something, some kind of program, then I can address your ideas or your other things you want to learn. Thanks for watching and see you in the next part.